remains of fish traps have been found along the coastline and in the rivers of both Scotland and of Ireland. These may be well over 3,000 years old, and some may have been used until comparatively recently. These traps were built using boulders or wicker fences, or a combination of both. Between Nardrossen and Hunston, which is about 14 kilometres, 35 have been tentatively identified, together with two fish ponds. This stretch of coastline has eight forts dating from the Bronze Age or Iron Age, and another eight castles. It seems likely that the fish traps were associated with them. The beach here, much of which is of rocky outcrops of sandstone and glaciated granite boulders, is ideal for the construction of fish traps. In addition, all along the coastline, there are a number of dikes. This is where lava has pushed its way through the red sandstone, forming long straight lines that would look like rubble walls. These were adapted for use with the fish traps. The boulders were carefully selected and moved into position physically. However, occasionally you can find large boulders that have been incorporated into the fish trap. The granite ones show no sign of tool working, but the red sandstone occasionally shows some signs of shaping. The builders made use of natu naturally occurring features on the beach. About six different styles of fish trap have been identified. They may be V-shaped as a common one. Sometimes they're rectangular. They can be with parallel sides to them with a wicker fence. Occasionally they might be circular, and sometimes they might make use of an existing feature such as a dike and place a parallel line of boulders on the other side, together with a trap at the bottom. At the North Inch in Sea Mill and at Farland Point, there are ponds which may have been deliberately excavated. The entrance to the one at North Inch in particular is like a canal, it's quite wide. And it seems that at high tide, particularly spring tides, the seawater would flow into the pond. It's thought that a wicker fence would have been placed here and that the fish caught from the fish traps could be kept in these ponds as long as necessary. On a boulder-strewn shoreline, these fish traps, also known in Scots as yares, are very hard to identify, particularly with the wave action over the millennia. They're originally identified by coming at all the different stages of the tide, which point you can see where the water is being held back with natural ponds with the artificial weirs added to them to make the trap. One of the best preserved V-shaped yares or fish traps is close to the seamill hydro. Here there's a natural dike of basalt which would have had stones or boulders on top of it, but the other wall of the V-shape is still present and very clearly it's not sitting on a dike and it's been of artificial construction. This fish trap may have survived because it may have seen later use as a breakwater. Boats would have come in carrying coal and limestone because there was once a lime kiln located on the raised beach. Quite apart from wave action, another reason why these fish traps would be hard to identify now is that a number of them were robbed that is, stone was taken from them, broken up and used in the construction of the roads, possibly also used for sea defences, and some may have been used in the construction of dry stone dikes on the nearby fields. The number of fish caught in these traps would be totally unpredictable. It relied upon the natural slope of the beach, so the rubble wall weir, or the wicker fence of the trap, would allow for the fish to swim over when the tide was high, but would be trapped as the tide fell. On the Solway at, at Pow Foot, the fish trap survives in a rectangular shape with one shut side open, made from wooden poles. At Ardmore Point on the Clyde Estuary, there is a fish trap or yare, also at nearby Col Grain. The one at Cold Grain is very obvious, it's standing on sand, it's rectangular in shape, with the upper side open. It may have been in use until compared to recently, because there is what was a fisherman's cottage still standing nearby. Some of these fish traps may actually be natural features, that may be constructed as breakwaters or serve some other purpose.